Simashi. Courtesy name Zi Yuan was a military general and a regent of Wei towards the end of the Three Kingdoms period. He assisted his father, Sima Yi, in a coup, which resulted in the death of Tao Shuang. After he inherited his father's authority and the post of the Wei Emperor Tao Fang, Sima Shi passed away, leaving his younger brother Sima Zhao to succeed him. Sima Shi was a cultured and elegant man with impressive charms. He was also a composed and tough man who excelled in grand strategies. In the year 208, Sima Yi's wife, Zhang Chunhua, gave birth to their firstborn, Sima Shi, at an unknown location. She bore him three sons, Sima Shi, Sima Zhao, Sima Gan, and also a daughter who was known as Princess Nanyang of the Jin Dynasty. Sima Shi would go on to marry Zia Hao Hui, a daughter of Zia Hao Shang. Hui's mother was a sister of Tao Zhen. She bore Sima Shi five daughters but no sons. She was known to be elegant and intelligent, who helped Simashi with his scholarship and strategies. His second wife was Lady Wu, the daughter of Wu Ji. Simashi's third wife, Yang Hui Yu, was the daughter of Lady Tai, a sister of Tai Wen Ji. This would also make her the granddaughter of Tai Yong. When he was young, Simashi was known for the elegance in his conduct and his intelligence. This earned him a reputation equal to that of Zia Hao Zuan and He Yan. He Yan himself once stated, The only person who could have the great achievements under the heaven is probably Sima Zi Yuan. Due to Sima Yi's high importance within the state of Wei, Sima Shi was able to progress up the ranks of officials fairly rapidly. Between the years 237 and 239, he was appointed as a cavalier attendant in ordinary and received a promotion to the military protector of the palace. During this time, he designed a system of talent selection where official candidates were promoted according to their feats without excess. Due to the way this new system was planned out, it meant there was no favouritism between the candidates. When Simashi's mother passed away in 247, he was recognised for the filial piety that he displayed at her funeral. Sima Yi and Tao Shuang were both regents for the Wei Emperor Tao Fang, who was 17 years old at the time of the incident. Tao Shuang plotted to overthrow Tao Fang and put himself on the throne. He put his brothers in command of the military, promoted his close aides within the imperial court, and made changes to the political structure. All the while he was wary of Sima Yi, who in June or July in 247 claimed to be ill, and so withdrew from the political scene. At this time, there was a saying in Luo Yang, He Yan, Deng Yang, and Ding Mi create turmoil in the imperial capital. Another of Shuang's supporters, Li Sheng, was reassigned as the inspector of Jing, but was secretly sent to check if Sima Yi was still sickly. Sima Yi pretended to cough and pant, acted frail and could not wear clothes without assistance. He acted as if he was no longer of sound mind, when he advised to send Xi and Zhao to assist Li Sheng to Bing province, even though the latter was heading to Jing province. News of this soon reached Tao Shuang, who lowered his guard against him. On February the 5th in the year 249, near Luoyang City, the incident at Gaoping Tombs occurred. The Book of Jin accords that Sima Yi only confided his plans to Sima Shi, and even excluded Sima Zhao from any discussions. An alternate account insists that Sima Yi planned the coup with both his sons. They told Sima Zhao only the evening before they took action. He tossed and turned in bed, whereas Sima Shi went to bed as usual. Xi was tasked with recruiting 3,000 loyal men in secret without Tao Shuang or any of his associates finding out. When the time to act came, Sima Shi was able to quickly summon his men and successfully carried out the coup. Sima Yi said about Sima Shi here, This son worked really well. Sima Shi had secretly gathered and kept 3,000 men of sacrifice who were scattered among the commoners. When the coup broke out, all of these men gathered and nobody knew where they came from. On the day, Shuang and his brothers accompanied the emperor on a visit to the Gaoping tombs to pay respects to the late Tao Rui, Tao Fang's father. Sima Yi went to Yongning Palace to meet Empress Dowager Guo and to ask her to remove Tao Shuang and his brothers from power. Just prior to this, Sima Yi, Xi and Zhao assembled their troops at the palace gates. Sima Shi's men were calm both outside and inside the gate, and he had an excellent deployment for the troops that he led. When Sima Yi was done with his meeting, he went to the location where Tao Shuang's troops were camped. One of Tao's subordinates almost fired an arrow at Sima Yi three times, but was stopped by an unsure and hesitant colleague of his. 
Sima Yi proceeded to grant imperial authority to Gao Ru, the Minister of Finance, and put him in charge of Tao Shuang's troops. He then appointed Wang Guan, the Minister Coachman, in command of Tao Zi's troops. After this, Sima Yi, Sima Shi, Jiang Ji and others led troops out of Luoyang to a pontoon bridge at the Luo River, where he displayed a written memorial to the emperor. Within it was a list of Tao Shuang's crimes. However, he was able to block the letter from reaching its destination and kept the emperor south of the Yi River. At the same time, Tao Shuang ordered for trees to be cut down and then constructed anti-cavalry blockades with a thousand men to prevent Sima Yi from advancing. Tao Shuang was advised by Huan Fan to relocate the emperor to Xu Chang, denounce Sima Yi, and call on all Wei forces to attack him. Tao did not heed this advice though, and instead sent Chen Tai and Zhu Yun to go and meet with Sima Yi. Yi explained to the pair that he only wanted Tao to surrender and to give up his powers. After Sima Yi sent Yin Damu, who was deeply trusted by Tao Shuang, to further convince him, he agreed to lay down his arms. Huan Fan again advised against this, but his words were not heeded by Tao Shuang, who said, Sima Yi only wants to take away my powers. I can still return home as a Marquis and live in luxury and comfort. Huan Fu could only sigh and thump his chest in frustration as Tao Shuang allowed Tao Fang to read Sima Yi's memorial. When Shuang returned to Luoyang on the 9th of February 249, he was charged with plotting treason with the palace eunuch Zhang Dang and his associates, He Yan, Ding Mi, Deng Yang, Bi Gui and Li Sheng. They were all of them put to death along with their families. Jiang Ji tried to save the Tao brothers in consideration of their father Tao Zhen's meritorious service to Wei, but Sima Yi refused. By the next month, Sima Yi was appointed as the imperial chancellor by Tao Fang, but he refused the position. The next year, he was granted the nine bestowments, but again, he refused to accept. Sima Shi became his father's assistant during these years, although there's no particular records of his accomplishments. After Sima Yi passed away in 251, she inherited his father's positions and titles with no significant opposition. As Sima Yi had suppressed a failed rebellion by Wang Ling and massacred the clans of Wang and his associates earlier that year. At the time when Sima Yi passed away, a lot of people said unanimously, when Yi Yin is gone, his son Yi Ji should take over. Tao Fang appointed Shi as the general-in-chief who pacifies the army, who should aim his career path towards regency. In late 251, the current Grand Administrator of Chen Kang, Deng Ai, wrote to Sima Shi regarding the Jiangnu tribes under Liu Bao and how they're growing too powerful. He proposed a method of bestowing titles and awards onto them, with means to divide and weaken them as they urged them to settle further away from Chinese citizens, whilst at the same time re-educating them of Chinese cultural traditions, a proposal which Sima Shi agreed to. Shi went on to be promoted to the General-in-Chief, became entitled to bear the imperial staff, given authority over the imperial secretariat, and was put in charge of all military affairs both in and out of the palace. He ordered that all officials should recommend talents, define the hierarchical ranks, take care of the impoverished and the orphaned, and to deal with any delayed personal affairs. Zhu Geidan, Guan Xiu Jian, Wang Chang, Chen Tai, and Hu Zun were appointed as the commanders for the different regional armies. Wang Ji, Xiao Tai, Deng Ai, and Shi Bao took charge of the affairs over provinces and commanderies. Liu Yu and Li Feng were to govern official selection. Fu Gu and Yu Song worked as members of the imperial think tank. Zhong Hui, Xie Hao Zuan, Wang Su, Chen Ben, Meng Kang, Xiao Fang and Zhang Ji served as courtiers in the central government. The people throughout the entire country were in strong support of these arrangements and everything from the governments to society was in order. Somebody suggested to Sima Shi that he alters the existing constitutions, to which he responded. A poet used to praise those who'd abide by the principles of the heavenly lord and appear as if they know nothing themselves. The institutions and rules devised by the ancestors of the three dynasties should be compiled with. If there is no war, there should be no reforms in haste. In 252, Sun Quan passed away and he was succeeded by his son Sun Liang. As Sima Shi was already proven in administration, but he wanted to prove his military capabilities as well, he approved of the attack request by Zhu Dan to attack Wu at Dongxing. But news of the Wei defeat soon reached the Wei Imperial Court. Many officials argued for the commanders to be demoted or dismissed for their failures. Sima Shi admitted that he did not listen to Zhu Dan when he said, I did not listen to Gong Ziyu, and that resulted in this situation. It's my fault. What have the generals done wrong? To appease the people, Sima Zhao, who was supervising the campaign, was stripped of his titles of nobility. 
Zhuge Ke captured large quantities of Wei equipment and livestock after the Battle of Dongxing and returned to Jianyi in triumph. Ignoring the advice of his officials, he led a 200,000 strong army in the year 253 north to attack Wei at Heifei. They reached the south of the Huai River and began attacking Wei at Xincheng, literally meaning new city or fortress. The Wei generals, Zhang Ti, Liu Zheng and Zhang Ziang, defended the fort with only 3,000 men. They held off attacks for over a month and inflicted massive casualties on the Wu enemy. Back at the Wei court, officials were worried that Wu might divide their troops and argued that troops should be sent to guard the river ports in preparation for such an attack. Sima Shi said, Zhu Ge Ke just took the power of regency in Wu, and he desired to gain some quick benefits, so he led his troops to gather at Heifei, where he might take his chance. He had no time to attack at Xingzu and Zhuzu, and there were so many river forts. If we station troops at a lot of ports, we have to send many people. If we just station at a few of them, our troops are not enough to resist the invaders. Zhu Ge Ke indeed focused all of his troops at Heifei as expected. Sima Shi dispatched Guan Xiu Jian and Wen Xin to help resist the invaders. When they arrived to the location, they wrote to Xi for approval to go and fight, who answered. Zhu Ge Ke launched an all-out attack in the hinterland of our turf, and his men are in a dangerous situation. It is not easy to confront them directly. Xincheng is a small city with firm walls, not easy for them to attack and seize. Xi ordered for higher walls to be built for defence, and after a few months, Zhu Ge Ke's offensive was exhausted with more than half of his men injured or worse. Xi then gave the order for Guan Xiu Jian to cut off the Wu retreat route, which caused Zhu Ge Ke to panic, where he suffered a great defeat and lost tens of thousands of men. He returned to Wu with his reputation tarnished, whereas at the same time, Sima Xi's military capabilities became established. Sima Xi maintained himself well by making humble admissions of fault to the public after his defeat at Dongxing, and also by promoting generals who tried to stop his campaign. Zhu Ge Ke, on the other hand, was unable to admit his faults, and so his reputation soon fell after his loss at New Heifei. In 254, the Emperor of Wei plotted with a number of his allies, the Emperor's father, Zhang Ji, Li Feng, Su Shuo, Yu Adan, and Liu Bao Zian. They attempted to remove Sima Shi from his regency role, and to install Zia Hao Zuan in his stead. Sima Shi learned of this and sent Wang Xian to invite Li Feng to his residence. They soon arrived together by coach, and Li Feng felt threatened. Sima Shi lectured Li Feng on his misdeeds and tried to get information out of him through interrogation. Li Feng refused to disclose any of the conversations he had had with the emperor and began to curse recklessly. Shi then became furious and had him knocked to death by warriors with the handles of their sabres. Sima Shi beat him to death with a sword handle arrested Zia Hao Zuan, Zhang Ji, and the other associates under accusation of treason, then all the people of their clans were executed. Some of Tao Fang's associates proposed a plan to him. When Sima Zhao arrives at the palace for an official visit before he attends his new station at Chang'an, to kill Sima Zhao, seize his men, and then use them to attack Sima Shi. Tao Fang was apprehensive about the idea and would not move, so did not implement the plan. But news of the scheme still leaked to Sima Shi, who then used that information as a further reason to force Tao Fang to step down. Next, Tao Fang was forced to depose of his wife, Empress Shang. This move further terrorised many other officials into submission. An edict was issued by Tao Fang, saying, Plotters Li Feng and his associates were used to hearing slanderous talk, and they secretly conspired vicious plans. The general-in-chief compiled with the laws for submission to the heaven, and had them slain for justice. Zhou Bo suppressed the chaos caused by the Lu clan, Huo Guang had Shang Guanji apprehended. There is no feat that can be greater than this heroic deed of the general Sima Shi. Thus, the scale of his fief is to increase by 9,000 households, added to the existing 40,000. Sima Shi modestly declined the offer. After the executions of Xia Hao Zuan and Zhang Ji, the Emperor Tao Fang was in a great panic, knowing that the rupture was revealed. Sima Shi secretly planned to depose of the emperor, and proposed this idea to Empress Dowager Yongning, who then wrote an edict. The monarch is now mature enough to rule, but his majesty failed to govern all the state affairs. His majesty indulged himself in his intimacy with palace attendants and concerts, for perverted joys. He stayed close to entertainers and failed to discipline them so they did not conduct indecent and brutal behaviours. He invited relatives of his consorts of the six palaces to stay at the imperial chambers, 
Such deeds brought stains to the immaculate normal human relations of the imperial house, and stirred the ethical order between men and women. He was also coerced by a group of villains, thus he cannot fulfil his duties on the throne. Tao Fang summoned a convention of courtiers with tears welling up, and asked for their advice on how they can assist the imperial house. They all responded unanimously that he just needs to accept the suggestion. When he asked for their advice on how he could avoid the arrangement altogether, a memorial was written with all the courtiers and presented to the empress. We hear that the Son of Heaven should live up to his duties and take care of the masses and bring peace to all the places under the heaven. Nowadays, the monarch has grown up, yet has not governed the state affairs in person. He orders young entertainers such as Guo Huai and Yuan Zin to practice perverted games in the nude. He also dressed himself up to mimic a coquettish woman from Liao Dong. Seeing that scene, the passers-by all covered their eyes with their hands. The director of Imperial Music Troupe admonished him. He burnt iron to scorch the man. When the Empress Dowager was in a bereavement of her mother, His Majesty kept having fun as usual. Vice Director of Imperial Music Troupe Pang Zi admonished him again, but he was reluctant to listen. When the Empress Dowager returned to the North Palace, where she had the beauty Empress Zhang executed, the monarch held a bitter grudge. When Zi admonished, he was irritated, and grabbed a stone to cast at the man with a slingshot. Every time a document was submitted to him, he would not even lay his eyes on it. The Empress Dowager ordered him to receive academic lectures at the chamber of Shi Xi'an, but he declined again. Therefore, he is not a qualified ruling heir of the Imperial House. We advised that the Empress Dowager should take back the Imperial Seal and Ribbon, and the monarch could return to his previous fief as the Prince of Shi. Sima Shi allowed Tao Fang to keep his life and the old title of Prince of Shi. The court dispatched envoys of the imperial staff to escort the prince to Shongmen in the Heinei Commandery. Guo Huai, Yuan Xin and their associates were all executed. After further discussions on the candidacy for the throne, Sima Shi wrote to the Empress Dowager. Today, the world is not in peace. There are two enemies contending for dominance. The throne of the monarch for all the people under the heaven belongs to only a wise man. Prince of Pengcheng, Tao Zhu, is the son of Emperor Tiazu. Concerning wisdom, he is a bright and benevolent man. Concerning age, he is the eldest son in the imperial house. The imperial throne is the most important post in the world. If the occupant of the throne is not talented, he can by no means bring peace to the entire nation. Xi wanted to crown Tao Pi's brother, Tao Zhui, as the new emperor, but Empress Dowager Guo persuaded him that such a succession would be improper as Tao Zhui was Tao Rui's uncle, and that such a succession would effectively leave Rui sonless with no heir forever. Sima Shi again insisted on crowning Tao Zhui, but the empress did not give in. Sima Shi was forced to agree with her, and so Tao Mao, although only 14 years old at the time, was known for his intelligence and crowned as the new emperor. It's believed that Empress Dao Guo thought that Tao Mao alone, of all the princes and dukes, might have had a chance of counteracting the Simas. At the enthronement, the new emperor appeared sluggish and he raised his feet too high. Upon hearing this, Sima Shi felt worried and so confided with the new emperor. Ancient people were cautious when it comes to maintaining foundation and honouring beginnings. Tomorrow, at the Grand Assembly, over 10,000 people are to look at your serious face and the courtiers would hear your nice voice. The classic of poetry says, when you do not show frivolity to the people, you are the one worth following. The classic of changes says, if you have nice sayings, you will have responses echoing by people from thousands of li away. Although the ceremony is well arranged, it is particularly important that your majesty should behave in a serious manner and all your subjects can look up to you. The new emperor later thanked Simashi in a written memorial, whereafter he was offered the position of imperial chancellor, but Simashi declined this offer. The second part of the emperor's thanks to Shi reads as follows, I appreciate your efforts very much. A man with remarkable virtues deserves a noble position. A man with great feats deserves a considerable salary. These rules prevail from ancient times to the present. I hereby appoint you, the General-in-Chief, as the Chancellor, and you are to have an addition of 9,000 households to your fief, which originally contained 40,000 households. Your official title is promoted as the General Commander, and you are entitled to bear the Yellow Imperial Axe. When you visit the throne at the court, you do not have to walk in small steps. When you report to the throne, you do not need to inform me of your name. You are entitled to the privileges of carrying a sword and wearing shoes in the court chamber. 
I shall award you a five million coins and five thousand rolls of satin to honour your grand feats. Simashi's response not only declined the position, but also advised the new emperor to attend academic lectures and study sessions frequently so the words of classics can be heard every day. At this time, the emperor had an obsession with extravagant ornaments. Simashi admonished him again, In the beginning of your majesty's reign, frugality is the better practice. The new emperor heeded Shi's advice on both occasions. Despite Empress Dowager Guo's intentions and Tao Mao's intelligence, they made very little impact in trying to stem the tide of the Sima's growing power. On the 11th month of that year, a streak of white clouds went through the sky. The first month of the following year, a comet appeared in the boundary between Wu and Shu. The phenomenon was at the northwestern corner of the sky and lasted for an entire day. In response to Tao Fang being removed from power, Guan Xu Jian and Wen Xin revolted in the year 255, which caused the second rebellion of Xu Chun. They issued an order to all commanderies and fiefs and built a terrace to swear allegiance outside the west gate. They both sent four sons each to Wu to act as hostages and to pledge for an alliance. In the second month, Jian and Xin led 60,000 men to cross the Hua River as they marched westwards. Sima Shi summoned his advisers to discuss war mobilisation. They insisted that he only needs to dispatch some officers to attack the rogue pair. Wang Su and Zhang Hui advised that Sima Shi should personally lead the men to quell the mutiny, and soon marched more than 100,000 men of the Imperial Infantry and Cavalry Forces to attack the rebels. The men marched at double speed, and Sima summoned troops from three directions as they advanced. Their army assembled in the suburbs of the two cities, Chengzhou and Xu Chang. When Sima Shi's forces were stationed at Ying Xiao, Guan Xu Jian's subordinates Shi Zhao and Li Zhu came over to surrender to Wei. Jian and Xin then led their forces into Ziang Cheng. Xi countered by ordering the inspector of Jing province Wang Ji to occupy Nandun, where he could then threaten Guan Xu Jian's location. Wang Ji's troops were ordered to build up defences and wait for the armies to assemble from the east. However, they asked for permission to attack, so Sima Shi replied, you know something obvious about the situation, but you do not know anything more profound about it. The men on the south bank of the Hua River have no idea how to start a revolt. Guan Xu Jian and Wen Xin want to follow the strategy of vertical and horizontal alliance. They desire to practice Zhang Yi and Su Xin's theories, and believe that they will be echoed with support by all places near and far. However, on the day that they revolted, the people on the north bank of the Hua River refused to follow them. Shi Zhao and Lu Zi broke away from them. They suffered internal instability and external rebellion simultaneously. They knew that they would sure lose the game, but even a beast at bay will put up a desperate fight. A quick operation fits their wish better. Though we are sure that we would win, there might also be a lot of casualties, and Jian and his officers were dishonest with their soldiers. They used every means of deception. Let's hold our forces and wait a while. Their deception would be exposed, and we don't need to fight to win. Zhu Dan was then sent to urge the forces of Yu province to march from Anfeng to Xu Chun. Hu Zhen also ordered forces of Xing province and Zhu province to march out from the regions between Xiao and Song. Their targets were the return roads that would be used by the insurgents. Sima Shi stationed his forces at Ruyang. He had Deng Ai feign weakness and stationed at Li Jia to lure in the enemy. Xin was drawn into the opportunity and was just about to launch his attack. At this moment, Sima Shi led his forces directly into Li Jia, where they reinforced Deng Ai in secret and met Wen Yang in combat, who was known for his unparalleled valour. Wen Yang said to his father, Now they are not composed, we should climb up to the city walls and play the drums, then we can launch an attack to smash them. As they carried out their plan, they played three rounds on the drums, but Xin could not respond with a successful attack. Wen Yang retreated and led his forces to the east, then Sima Shi looked to and told his generals, Xin is gone. Before he ordered for his elite forces to chase the enemy, the generals all said, Xin is a veteran commander, while Yang is a young and sharp man. They led their men into the city and didn't suffer a loss. It's impossible that they have fled. Sima Shi replied, When the first round of drum playing happened, the soldiers had their best morale. The second round went with a decline of morale. When the third round is played, their morale was exhausted. Yang played three rounds, and there was no response from Xin. They already felt frustrated. What are they waiting for if they do not flee? In order to secure their escape, Wen Yang led more than 10 valiant cavaliers to charge against Sima Shi's unit. Wherever they went, they smashed the defence, and then they retreated. 
Simar Lian was then sent with 8,000 cavaliers in pursuit, and Yue Chen led infantry forces to follow the cavalry. When they caught up, they rushed into the formations of Wen Xin a few times. The arrows fell like rain, while Wen Xin covered himself with a shield and ran for his life. The government forces smashed the insurgents, who all dropped their dagger axes to signal their surrender. Wen Xin and Wen Yang rushed as the Yang Cheng. When Guan Xiu Jian learned of their fiasco, he abandoned his crowd and fled south of the Hua River at night. The commandant of An Feng Ferry Port chased Jian, beheaded him, and sent it back to the capital. Peace on the south bank of the Hua River was restored. At the beginning of this conflict, Sima Shi had a tumour in his eye. He had recently ordered a doctor to remove it, which was somewhat successful, but then when they came under attack from Wen Yang, he became shocked, which caused his eye to fall out of the socket. Worried that the armies might panic, he covered himself in a quilt, and throughout his severe application during the fighting, he bit the quilt into rags. Nobody around him noticed his suffering. The following month, his illness turned critical, which is when he entrusted his younger brother Sima Zhao to take charge of all military affairs. He died at the age of 48 at Zhu Chang in the year 255. The second month of the following year, Sima Shi's coffin arrived at Luoyang. The emperor arrived from Zhu Chang and dressed himself in white to present his condolences at the coffin. The imperial edict read, Your Highness has achieved great feats. You protected the people and brought peace to the state. You suppressed rebellions and chaos, and you died in sacrifice to defend the throne. You deserve special veneration and right. The courtiers should discuss the ceremonies for the funeral. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.